Welcome to Math Class with Mr. Smith, everybody. As promised, here is the video on decimals. You're going to see how to identify a decimal with a given picture and how to turn it into its fraction equivalent. So let's go ahead and get to it. Well, to start off, we must understand that decimals, like fractions, represent part of a whole. They are not an entire whole. It's just, like I said, a part of it. So in that case, Decimals and fractions can be equivalent to each other. If I say three-tenths, it sounds like a fraction, but it also sounds like a decimal as well. And I'll show that in a little bit uh, coming soon. So let's go ahead and identify how a, you can represent a part of a whole using a decimal form and a fraction. So I did us the favor of putting the ones, the tenths, and the hundredth place here. These are the two new place values that students will be learning in fourth grade. Excuse me. So, let's explain how these work. A one can also be known as a whole. This is represented with just a simple one, or you can also write it as one and zero tenths, and I'll put an imaginary zero to show one and no hundredths. They all represent the same thing. In a fraction, in order for a fraction to be considered a whole, the numerator and denominator have to be equal. In the case of tens, you would need ten tenths, because they're both equal, that makes it a whole. And in the case of the hundredths, you would need a hundred hundredths to make a whole. Now, when I talk about pictorials, I'm talking about base 10 blocks. And we should know base 10 blocks as the 100 flat, the 10 rod, and the 1 unit. When looking at pictures, the 100 flat, when it comes to decimals, the 100 flat now represents one whole. When it comes to the tenths, you write it as zero decimal one. You can also think of it as money. Think of tenths as dimes and ask yourself, well, what is the value of a dime? It happens to be 10 cents. So that's where we get the equivalent of 10 hundredths. 10 hundredths equals one tenth. In fraction form, to get one tenth, you need one of the ten rods needed to make a tenth. One tenth, one out of ten. Pretty straightforward. Now, if the flat represents a whole, the tenth should be represented by the you guessed it, the rod, the 10 rod. We use that for a picture. And last but certainly not least is the hundredths. And you're probably thinking, well, what does a hundredth look like in its decimal form? Well, when it comes to comparing to money, the holes are the dollars, tenths are dimes, hundredths, I wanna say those are pennies. And how do, what is the value of a penny? One cent. And just like you write a penny's value, one cent, the same thing with one hundredth, just one out of a hundred. And in fact, saying that one out of a hundred, you have the fraction. And what pictorial what pictorial model is used for the hundredths? Well, it is the tiny one unit and that's how we can represent these here the decimal version of one tenth is equivalent to the fraction version of one tenth and the decimal and the and the base 10 rod is the representation for one tenth zero decimal zero one is the decimal version of one hundredth <clears throat> One out of a hundred 
is the fraction version of one hundredth, and the tiny little cube, the unit, is the pictorial model for one hundredth. So let's go ahead and look at a couple of examples here. I've got these four models of decimals and fractions. So let's look at the first one. We'll call this one model one, two, three, and four. Well, the first one, the fraction seems pretty simple. To get the fraction, I need a fraction bar. And first things first is I want to identify the denominator. Remember, the denominator is the entire set of pieces that make up the whole. In this case, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. There are 10 pieces of the whole. And of those 10 pieces, it looks like 7 are shaded. So we get 7 tenths there. Now, how to write the decimal? Interesting. I would, and I've shown the students how to do this, and I would highly suggest we practice creating our place value chart. And for the sake of time, I'm going to abbreviate it. This is the ones, the tenths, and the hundredths. Let me go ahead and fill this in because it looks like a giant O. Am I being confused or something? Now, in order to get one hole, the entire model has to be shaded. And in this case, it is not shaded, so therefore, we have no holes, zero holes. Tenths, well, let's see. In the model, tenths are represented by rods. And how many rods do I see here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven rods, and we have seven tenths. And if you want to go further, there are no hundredths, but we can actually do one of two things. We can either leave this alone because there's no hundredths to consider, or since there are no hundredths, we can actually put an imaginary zero because it technically means that there's no hundredths there. Usually, though, it'll be written like this, 7 tenths. In option 2, or option 2, hello, uh, example 2, well, this is interesting. It doesn't look anything like option 1. Well, why am I saying options for right now? It is nothing like example 1. These pieces are cut further. Well, let's go ahead and find the fraction. If you ask me, the fraction is the easiest one to do. Well, we need to find all the pieces of the hole. And inside this particular hole, it looks like they're cut into, I'm going to go off and say, 100. Do y'all think so? Yeah, it is 100. Because it's 10 rods going this way, and they decided to cut 10 rods going across, so 10 by 10, 100. Hey, they checked that out, a times table. So... If we refer back to our knowledge of base 10 blocks, I know that 10 units make up a rod. So technically, I have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 units here. And then I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 units here. So it looks like I have 57 hundredths. Not that hard. Let's go ahead and get the decimal going. Put your decimal marker. Ones. Tenths. Hundredths. Well, let's ask ourselves. In order to get the ones, which is the holes, is the entire model shaded? No, it's not. So we put a zero. Tenths are modeled by rods. Now, a lot of times what happens with some students is they see that, you know what, it's not cut like how example one was. That sounded weird. 
It wasn't cut in the same way that number one was. So, there's no rods. There technically is. Remember what I said earlier. Ten units make up a rod. And let's see. We have a full set of ten here, so there's one rod. A full set of ten here, so that's two rods. A full set of ten here, so that's three. A full set of ten, so that's four. And a full set of ten, so that's five rods. And then for the hundredths, now that we've counted these five rods, we just need the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven squares that were shaded. And we got 57 hundredths. And these two are equivalent to each other. They have the exact same value. Now to throw a little bit of a curveball. I forgot to show this earlier, but I'm going to have it here in the video, so we will have reference to it. I know some students saw this on their IXL accounts at school, and they were able to do them very well, so I am proud of them. In this case, let's continue. Well, this fraction, let's see. If I want to make the fraction first, well, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I got 13 rods shaded, but so that technically looks like it'd be. 13 tenths but wait a minute if I remember correctly back in third grade this is called an improper fraction the numerator is greater than the denominator well can't we actually say that instead of 13 tenths can't we say that one of the holes is shaded and in the second hole only three of the ten are shaded looks about right to me in fact, you can write the, you, it can be written either way, but the correct form is known as a mixed number. Above here is called an improper fraction. You can leave improper fractions when you get older, but for fourth grade, it's always best to convert it to a mixed number. And I will show you the process on how to do this here uh, later on in the year. But for now, we can just say that we have one hole, which is the entire model shaded, and three tenths of another hole. So we'll call it like that. Now, going back to the decimal, again, ones, tenths, hundredths. Well, and the ones, do we actually have an entire model shaded? In this case, we do. We have one that is shaded. So we take we took care of this part. Do we have any tenths? Well, I've got three extra shaded. So yes, I do. I got three extra tenths shaded. And if you notice, it looks like the number thirteen, which is thirteen tenths. That's where you get the improper fraction from. Now, like I mentioned before, these are not cut into hundredths like in example two. So we can actually leave the hundredths alone, or in some cases people like to put the imaginary zero to indicate that there is no hundredths. Seeing that, let's look at number four. I'm going to give you guys about three seconds. You can go ahead and pause the video and you can take a shot at this on your own. And let's see what you get. All right, welcome back. Let's go ahead and get to this. Well... I know that they're cut into a hundred pieces. Both models are. Do I have an entire model shaded? Yes, I do. So I'm going to already say I got one full model shaded. Now all I'm going to really do is I'm going to count the number of squares in the second model. I got 10, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So it looks to me like it's 1 and 29 hundredths. Okay, let's look at the decimal. We ask ourselves again, is there an entire model shaded? Yes. Do we have any tenths? Remember, ten units make up a rod. So I have a full set of 10 here, so that's one rod. 
I have a full set of 10 here, so that's two rods. This is not a full set, so that can't count. So I can count two rods. And then finally, the number of hundreds left over. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And these are equivalent to each other. So this is how we are gonna be working with decimals in the classroom. I will also be showing how to identify num decimals on a number line. And we are also gonna enter number representations with decimals. Just a quick little review. Remember how earlier in the year I taught you students how to write a number in word form, expanded form, and expanded notation? Well, now we're gonna go, we're gonna go ahead and throw decimals into the mix. Sounds a little scary, but I know we can get through this, no problem. Parents, once again, if you have any questions, contact me on Class Dojo or contact me uh, at the school and I will get back to you uh, quickly. Enjoy the rest of your evening.